It is nice to meet you, the pastors, theology students, and all of the believers around the world who are attending Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony on Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. My name is Park Pom Jun, and I'll be your host today. First, I would like to thank everyone who is visiting our Shincheonji Online Seminar today. As you receive the testimony of the prophecies and fulfillment of the book of Revelation today, I hope you receive the huge grace of God and also receive a deeper understanding of His Word. We'll first offer up a prayer before starting the seminar today. Our Holy Father, who is full of love and grace, we thank you for allowing us to glorify you in your precious truth as you gather us here at Shincheonji Online Seminar, Testimony and Prophecy and Fulfillment of Revelation, God's New Covenant. Today is a time of the fulfillment of Jesus' prophecies as promised 2,000 years ago. Please give the abundant wisdom of heaven to the family members of faith whose hope is in heaven as they hear the word of testimony of Revelation's prophecies and fulfillment. Please allow them the eyes to see, ears to hear, and the wise mind to perceive. Help us to understand once again regarding the covenant of God and Jesus as we look forward to heaven and eternal life you promised to fulfill. Please pour out your words of wisdom and power to our tribe leader who will be testifying to your word today. And let it be a precious time of glorifying you. We leave everything up to you as we pray in the name of Jesus who guided us from death to life. Amen. This online seminar is being conducted with strict adherence to health regulations and social distancing guidelines. Now is the time to listen to the words of life. We'll be going over the content of Revelation chapter 16. Let's welcome up Philip tribe leader Kim Won Guk for the word. Hello to all the religious people around the world and to the various pastors and all the family of faith who long for heaven and eternal life. It's truly nice to meet all of you. I pray in the name of Jesus that God's grace and love will be filled to all those who have joined us here. I am Kim Won Kuk, Philip tribe leader of Shincheonji Church of Jesus, established in the name of Philip, a disciple of Jesus. First of all, thank you so much for taking your precious time to attend the Shincheonji Online Word Seminar, despite your busy schedule. I hope you gain valuable understanding and perception through the words of promise in the Bible, and I hope that we can all go on the path toward heaven. Now, I will clearly testify to what Jesus prophesied through parables in the Bible and regarding the realities that have appeared at the proper time according to those prophecies. God's words to be shared today, as mentioned earlier, will be the content of the testimony on prophecy and fulfillment of Revelation, God's new covenant, chapter 16 in the book of Revelation. I believe that you were able to receive the words of Revelation chapter 5 well last time and a great time of grace and perception. Now we will go into the content of Revelation chapter 16. First, the title is The Seven Bowls of Wrath. Let's read the title together in one voice. Ready? Begin. The Seven Bowls of Wrath. The contents of Revelation chapter 16 are about the bowls that pour out judgment upon the betrayers who have abandoned and forsook the covenant made with God and the destroyers who have devoured the chosen people who betrayed. As we have seen through the past seminar in Revelation chapter 13, the people of the tabernacle of heaven received the mark of the beast and worshiped the beast, therefore became 
betrayers. And because the beast, like pastors, invaded there and destroyed them, therefore they became the destroyers. Isn't that true? And so God poured out His bowls of wrath and judged them. Since the deeds of the destroyers who destroyed the betrayers were evil, and these deeds of the betrayers were wrong, the wrath of judgment were against their sins. The place where the judgment is poured out is a place where the betrayers were and where the destroyers destroyed the betrayers, which is the tabernacle of heaven in Revelation chapter 13. The tabernacle of heaven. And those who pour out the seven bowls of wrath are those who overcame. These are those who were victorious who gathered at the temple of the tabernacle of testimony, as seen in Revelation chapter 15. In Revelation chapter 12, they were those who fought the group of the dragon and overcame. The reason why those who were victorious were used by God as His bowls of wrath is because they saw and heard the events of the deeds of the betrayers and destroyers in Revelation chapter 12 and 13. So the content of what we will see together in Revelation chapter 16 is what God made known concerning the people that He used to contain His wrath, poured it out onto the betrayers and destroyers, and judged them. And there are three major plagues in the book of Revelation. It is the plague of seven seals in Revelation chapter 6, the plague of seven trumpets in Revelation chapters 8 and 9, and the plague of the bulls of wrath in Revelation chapter 16 that we will learn today. The plague of these bulls of wrath is a plague that judges both the betrayers and destroyers. And this plague will be the last plague in the book of Revelation. Then, when God judged these betrayers and destroyers, how did He judge? It will not be in any way, right? The judgment of Revelation chapter 16 is to pay back what, he ha what has been done, connecting back to Revelation chapters 6, 8, and 9, where the destroyers destroyed the betrayers. In Revelation chapter 13, verse 10, if you look there, it says, If anyone is to go into captivity, into, into captivity, he will go. And if anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword, he too will be killed. Also, in Revelation chapter 18, verse 6, if you look there, it says, Give back to her as she has given. Pay her back double for what she has done, and mix her a double portion from her own cup. Since the destroyers that belong to Satan destroyed God's tabernacle in Revelation chapters 8 and now, 8 and 9, in Revelation chapter 16, they too will be destroyed and dis disappear in the same way. In the same way, they will be destroyed and dis disappear. We'll go into the main verses and I'll explain more in detail. The results of the judgment of pouring out the bowls onto the betrayers and destroyers was a plague that came upon them. And the great city Babylon split into three parts, and the cities of all the nations will collapse. Then, let's go into the main reference verse and take a look, a closer look in detail. Let's read within the main reference in Revelation chapter 16, verses 1 and 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go pour out the seven bowls of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly and painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. Yes, everyone read well. In the first verse, a loud voice comes from the temple and says to pour seven bowls of wrath on the earth. This temple is the temple of the tabernacle of testimony in Revelation chapter 15 where those who are victorious are gathered. Since God is with those at the temple of tabernacle of testimony, the voice of God comes from the temple. So those who fought against the beast became God's bowls of wrath. Then, what is this earth where God's wrath pours out? In Revelation chapter 13, verse 3, 
If you look there, it says that the whole world was astonished and followed the beast. In Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, it says that all inhabitants of the earth worship the beast. Also, in Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 13, it is recorded that those who forsake the Lord will be written in the dust. Like this, the earth where such wrath poured out onto was a congregation of the tabernacle of heaven who worshipped the beast after receiving the mark of the beast in Revelation chapter 13. In verse 2, the bowl was poured out and the people who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image in other words, the betrayers, ugly and painful sores broke out on them. The word ugly and painful sores may be a little, a little difficult to understand. But when it comes to sores, it usually refers to a damaged spot due to torn skin. Not a wound on the actual body of the betrayers, but a wound of the heart. That is what it is referring to. When it comes to ugly and painful sores, what is ugly or evil is when God's chosen people forsakes the covenant with God and acknowledging the doctrine of destroyers and even worshipping with their doctrines. And if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 33, it says that wine is the venom of serpents, the deadly poison of cobras. Similar to this, Venom is Satan's doctrines that kills the spirit of men. But ugly or evil and poisonous means that the actions of the betrayers that have received the ugly or evil and poison from the destroyers have been revealed by the words of wrath. Because of this, they cannot deny or they cannot hide. It will mean the pain and wounds of this heart, the pain and the wounds of the heart. And this is what that means. To sum up, the main point of the plague of the first bull was to pour the word of God's wrath on the land, clearly revealing the actions of the chosen people that betrayed of the tabernacle, forsaking God like Adam, serving false shepherds and accepting the false doctrines of the serpent. Speaking of revealing these things, then let's continue by reading Revelation chapter 16, verse 3. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea, and it turned into blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. Yes, in verse 3, the second bowl was poured into the sea. In the Bible, the parable of sea is also in the Old Testament in Daniel chapter 7, verse 2 and 3. And if you go to verses 15 to 17, there are beasts that come out of this sea. And it says that they are kings that rise from the world. So then the sea is the world, specifically the world that Satan rules over. Furthermore, it refers to the beast with seven heads and ten horns. In other words, the destroyers from the sea in Revelation chapter 13. It is a place that teaches the destroyers. And the creatures living in the sea refers to all the church members of the world, including the congregation of the tabernacle belonging to the beast. And because seawater is like life for the creatures in the sea, the seawater in the reference verses refers to the doctrines of false shepherds that believers in the world use as spiritual drinking water. However, it says that the bowl of wrath is poured into the sea, and it turned in, into blood like, the, like that of a dead man. That means that judging the false shepherds with God's words reveals that they testify to te Satan's doctrines, lies without life, like the blood of the dead. Therefore, the main point of the second bowl of the plague is to reveal the doctrine of the destroyers, false shepherds, which are lies and without life, and that the saints who listen to sermons of destroyers will no longer hear the false doctrines that turned out to be lies. So then, let's continue to read the contents of verses 4 to 7 of the reference. 
The third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the water say, You are just in these judgments, you who are and who are the Holy One, because you have so judged. For they have shed the blood of your saints and prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. And I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgments. Yes, the third bowl is about an angel pouring the bowl of wrath into the rivers and springs of water, and they became blood. And it is the content of feeding that blood to their enemies. Just as water gives us life, the Bible compares a word that gives us eternal life to water. The spring, which can be said to be the source of water, is like a shepherd who testifies to the word. And the river flowing from the spring represents the evangelist who conveys that word. So if you look at the words in John chapter 7, verse 38, Jesus said that whoever believes in me, streams of living water will flow from within him. Also in Revelation chapter 8, water, springs, and rivers were judged by the third trumpet sound. And according to Revelation chapter 8, verses 10 to 11, a star named Wormwood fell from the sky, falls into the spring and rivers and waters, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. So when the trumpet is sounded, the waters, springs, and the rivers were judged, were shepherds and evangelists of the tabernacle temple that once belonged to God, but the rivers and springs where the bowl of wrath was poured out onto, in Revelation chapter 16, are different from the former because they belong to a different entity, which are shepherds and evangelists of Satan. Shepherds and evangelists of Satan are judged. According to the words of Revelation chapter 13, the judgment concerning anyone who kills will also be killed fulfills exactly as it is written. And it is said that the water became blood when the bowl was poured out. And Jesus' blood means the word of life, which we must eat. But the blood in the reference means the false doctrines that have no life of the destroyers. Ultimately, when the bowl was poured out, the springs and rivers became blood, which means that judging the false shepherds and evangelists of Satan, belonging to the destroyers with the word of God's wrath, revealed the lies without life. So the more the bowl of wrath was poured out, from the perspective of these destroyers, the more their realities are exposed, right? And in verse 6, it says that they, the group of the beasts, have shed the blood of the saints and the prophets, and have given them blood to drink as they deserve. If that's the case, then what is the reason for the group of the beast to shed the blood of the saints and the prophets? This is because since the time of Adam, there has been an entity who has killed many saints and prophets, correct? It is the evil spirit Satan, the devil. Just as spirit uses his body to work, in the last era, at the time of the end, Satan chose these destroyers and worked through them. Therefore, judging the destroyers is like judging whom? It's like judging Satan, the devil, that we're using them. So what does it mean to give blood to the destroyers to drink? It is to reveal that the doctrines that the destroyers claimed to be truth were actually lies that are like blood of beasts that is undrinkable. So this sound may be something that you don't want to hear, but it naturally comes, came to their ears. Isn't this forcing them to not drink blood 
that they didn't want to drink through their ears? And Revelation chapter 13 verse 10 also said that if anyone is to be killed with the sword, with the sword he will be killed. It's paying back as it is written. In Revelation chapters 8 and 13, there are things that the destroyers did. Actions such as turning rivers and springs of water to become blood and fed that blood to kill the saints. So in Revelation chapter 16, the rivers and springs of water belonging to Satan became blood so that the destroyers can drink that blood. In summary, the main point of the third bowl of wrath was to pour this wrath onto the false shepherds and evangelists to reveal that their doctrines are lies. And to let the destroyers of the beast hear directly that their doctrines were false doctrines. Next, let's read the contents of verses 8 and 9 together. The fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. They were seared by the intense heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over these plagues but they refused to repent and glorify Him. To continue, looking at the plague of the fourth bowl, the fourth angel poured out the bowl of wrath on the sun. It is said that the sun was given power to scorch people with fire. What is this sun spoken of here? If you go to Psalms chapter 84, verse 11, and see within the word that the sun is used figuratively using the natural order as a parable and refers to God who shines the light of the Word and the shepherd that belongs to Him. However, there are two spiritual types of sons. One, meaning God who guides His chosen people and His tabernacle and the shepherd that belongs to God. And the other means Satan that rules the tabernacle of Gentiles and its shepherd. In the main reference, the son that received God's wrath refers to the false shepherd of Satan. Correct? The reality is that in Revelation chapter 13, the dragon gave the beast his power and his throne and great authority, and the beast spoke the dragon's words, which was the stewardship education center. As mentioned, the bowl of wrath poured on the sun, and the sun was given power to scorch the people with fire. So the fire here means the words of anger poured out by a false shepherd. Rather than repenting as God's anger was being poured out, the beast tormented the saints that were captured, the saints of the tabernacle temple with words of anger. Seeing this event spiritually, God's ten plagues poured onto King Pharaoh at the time of Exodus, during the time of Moses, in the past, and the more wrath he received, the stronger his heart became hardened. And you can think of what he did to the people of Israel even that much more. Similarly, if you look at Revelation chapter 17 and 18, there were those that were captured, and Revelation chapter 16 refers to those who were captured that were actually being tormented. So the main point of the plague of the fourth bull is that this wrath was poured on the destroyers, the shepherds of destroyers, and rather than repenting after hearing the word, they tormented the congregation of the tabernacle that, be that betrayed even that much more. Next, let's read the contents of verses 10 and 11 together. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their tongues in agony, and cursed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but they refused to repent of what they had done. In the main reference verses, the, where there is a throne and the kingdom, where is this throne and the kingdom of the beast? If you go to the words of Revelation chapter 13 verse 2, it says that the dragon, in other words Satan, gave to the beast with seven heads and ten horns his power and throne. The throne of the beast, where the bull was poured upon, was the false shepherds, where the evil spirit has come upon. 
Furthermore, the organization of Satan in which they all became united, Satan's organization, the reality of that organization is a stewardship education center. In Revelation chapters 17 and 18, this is the home of demons called Babylon. In Revelation chapter 12, a male son with an iron scepter overcomes by fighting the dragon and the group of the dragon, the destroyers. So from that time on, God judges the kingdom of dragon and the beast together with those who overcame. What does it mean when the bowl of wrath is poured out and the kingdom and the throne of the beast are darkened? In John chapter 1 verses 1 to 4, if light refers to the word of God, then darkness will be the opposite, correct? By judging those who are destroyers with the word of God's wrath, it means that the doctrines of the destroyers have been revealed to be lies so that they can no longer claim to be truth. In the past, the chosen people of God's kingdom were invaded by destroyers, they were unable to speak and became darkened. But now, the organization of destroyers, God has been has judged and are darkened. As a result of this, the plague of the fifth bull, the tabernacle saints, belong, who belong to the destroyers, bite their tongues and blaspheme God with sores and boils. Here, the sores and boils is referring to them coming to know that they have received the false doctrines of the destroyers. And this sin of theirs is a sorrow that arises and exposed to the world and the wounds in their hearts that result from it. Nevertheless, as in the days of Noah and Lot, they do not repent of their sins, but rather blaspheme God. Although Revelation chapters 2 and 3, a, letters were, a letter was sent, the saints of the tabernacle did not repent. And even after the trumpets blew in Revelation chapters 8 and 9 and made known to them, they still did not repent. And even here in Revelation chapter 16, they still do not repent. The main point of the plague of the fifth bull is that the word of God's wrath, the words of God's wrath, judges the destroyers so that the doctrines have been exposed to be lies, which means that they can no longer claim to be truth. And also, the betrayers that became one with the destroyers still do not repent despite their sins being now revealed. Next, we'll read the contents of verses 12 to 16 together. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. There are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs, and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come like a thief. Blessed is he who stays awake and keeps his clothes with him, so that he may not go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gather the kings together to the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. Yes, in the main reference, this Euphrates is compared to where the fourth river flowed from the Garden of Eden in the east at the time of Adam in Genesis chapter 2, verse 14. In Revelation chapter 9, verse 14, the four angels who have sinned, in other words, Satan, the devil, it's a place where they are bound. It's referring to Satan's dwelling place. So the Euph Euphrates is the headquarters of the destroyers. And in reality, it is a stewardship education center. And the river Euphrates refers to the false shepherds belonging to them, and the river water becomes the very false doctrines that those false shepherds preach. 
It is said that the bowl of wrath was poured out onto the river Euphrates and its river and its water dried up. This will be the content of judgment on what the destroyers taught, fed, and gave and preached. When the destroyers are judged by the word of God's wrath, the doctrine they claimed is revealed to be lies. So what happened? This wrath, isn't this the wrath now pointing out their sins? So the words that float out of their mouth like a river can no longer be said. They cannot come up with their own doctrines. So that's why it is said that the river dried up. Therefore, when the bowl of wrath was poured out on the Euphrates, the river dried up, it means that the doctrines of the destroyers were no longer in the mouths of the people and disappears. Now, through this bowl of wrath, the doctrines of the destroyers were revealed to be as lies, and the waters of the Euphrates have dried up. Now, there are those who come out that were captive. And it says that they are the kings who are said to come from the east, as the water of the Euphrates dries. So there are people that couldn't come out, but because uh, they understand the word, they are able to. First, the east refers to the place where the sun rises. In the Bible, God is also referred to as the sun. Since light is the word of God, the east, in the reference, refers to the place where God's work began. It's not just a location like the east or in, uh, uh, the west. These kings of the east are God's chosen people who return to God after being captive in Babylon. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, they represent the royal priesthood of God, who are like kings, and those who will become priests of God. When the doctrines of false shepherds, such as the Euphrates River, are exposed as lies, they are freed from the destroyers who, are kept, who held them captive and come to the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony where God is. At that time, the word of testimony becomes the way to guide them. They follow the way of the word and come out. If we look at this, in, this event spiritually, it is similar to the event in Exodus chapter 14, where the Israelites were living under the king of Egypt, and God dried up the Red Sea and made them cross. That is a sixth bull, which is the main point of this plague, this bull is poured out on the headquarters of the destroyers and their doctrines are revealed to be lies. And because of this, the doctrines of the, doctor, the destroyers disappear, and the word of testimony becomes the way for people to come out of Babylon to the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony. In the midst of this, there are three unclean spirits like frogs that come out of the mouths of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. What does it mean that, it, uh, that an evil spirit come out of the mouths of false shepherds? Words are a means of conveying the thoughts of the spirit. And if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, it is said that the, the heart of man is a house where the spirit dwells, whether it's the Holy Spirit or evil spirit. It is, a, it is because the spirit works in the heart of the person has taken up residence and through the words that come out of the person's heart. And the spirits of demons gather the kings of the world for war with God. Isn't it that the overcomers are now serving as bulls of wrath, pouring out God's wrath onto the betrayers and destroyers? It's like a situation of a war. But because the beasts are unable to win. Therefore, they gather all the other kings of the world, gathering the kings of the world. 
So, who will these people be? Just as there is an expression of a royal priesthood, in the Bible, a king refers to a shepherd who rules and guides the, the saints. In other words, the kings of the world are the shepherds of the world. They are the soldiers of the devil who have been summoned to fight against God. Where are these kings of the world gather for war? It is Armageddon. They are gathered for war at Armageddon. The, war, the Armageddon War. Some of you may have heard of it. Is it the third war because all the kings of the world gather to fight? Is it a third world war? Or is it a nuclear war? I don't know if some of you may thought this way. Actually, the area called Armageddon was a battlefield where Israel and the Gentiles fought from history. It is a place where wars were frequent in the Old Testament times. And Armageddon in verse 16 is under is actually a, a figurative name. Where Israel fought many wars, it is a spiritual battlefield where the kings of the world gather and fight. So this is a spiritual war, spiritual battlefield. Now there is a war going on here where the bowls are, are being poured out. And the, he the tabernacle of heaven of Revelation chapter 13 can be called the spiritual battlefield, Armageddon. The beasts were trying to gather their soldiers into this battlefield. So to help them in that war, do you understand? And furthermore, this Babylon, the kings of Babylon, and the people of duty from the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony, they fight. Wherever it may be, it can be called Armageddon. In conclusion, Armageddon, in Revelation chapter 16, is a spiritual Armageddon where spiritual Babylon, the kings of the earth, and the people of duty of Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony fight together. Next, let's read together from Revelation chapter 16, verse 17 to the last verse. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since man has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts, and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great, and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away, and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones of about a hundred pounds each fell upon men and they cursed God on account of the plague of hail because the plague was so terrible. Yes, now the last and seventh bowl have been poured out into the air. The air. Pouring it out into the air, it means to announce the truth of the betrayers and the destroyers through media outlets. According to the Bible, the shepherds who enter the temple, uh, the tabernacle temple, are beasts with seven heads and ten horns that came up from the sea, who are the destroyers. And the saints of the tabernacle temple that received the mark of the beast regarding their actions are now made known. Not only that, in addition, isn't it, aren't these illegal acts of setting up evangelists of the tabernacle temple as Presbyterian ministers with a single ordination? And that news spread throughout the country, through media and through pamphlets. The sound of the testimony passed from person to person, mouth to mouth, and spread widely, and the ripple effect was greater than any other bowl that was poured out. After the rumors of betrayal and destruction spread, God, who came to the Temple of Tabernacle of Testimony, says, It is done. At this time, the lightning refers to the rapid movement of the spirits, and the vo voice and the thunder are the words of God's judgment and God's wrath. Also, there is a great earthquake 
meant that the hearts of the saints who belong to the beast of destruction have fallen into a spiritual heart of uh, being shaken, where they believed that their denomination that belonged to was safe and it was orthodox with salvation. But when they found out that it was a place where Satan worked, they had no choice but to be troubled. Therefore, the, the main point of the seventh bowl plague is that it was pouring the bowl into the air, and the bowl that poured out into the air are the rumors. In other words, the media reports were the betrayers and their destroyers and their actions. The events that happened in the first tabernacle is made known to all the countries and all the nations, where all the churches are made known this story of these events. This last seventh bowl, the great city of Babylon is divided into three parts, it says. The great city of Babylon, in the reference, is the dwelling place of demons, the home of demons, that have the throne of Satan. And the fact that it is divided into three parts means that it is divided into the temple, the tabernacle temple, Babylon, the kingdom of beasts, and the temple of the tabernacle of testimony, where it is divided into the dwelling place of betrayers, the destroyers, and the group of salvation, where evil people gather with other evil people, and good and righteous people gather with the good and righteous. And the cities, islands, and mountains of all nations that are collapsing together with the judgment of the city of Babylon refer to the many churches in the world. And in fact, it refers to the branches of the Stewardship Education Center across the country. The lack of islands and mountains means that the city of Babylon, which received God's wrath, disappeared and disappears. There is one more work of judgment of the seventh bowl, and that is the great hailstone that weighs 100 pounds. The plague of this great hailstone in the time of Moses, it actually came down from heaven. But the hail at the fulfillment of Revelation is not a literal hail, but spiritual hail, hail. That is, the shepherd who received the word of wrath and the word of wrath who was prophesied. And that fulfillment in Revelation is the new John that received the word of the revealed word of Revelation. So the new John is the promised shepherd who comes in the name of John that was prophesied. And the hail in the reference is the same hail mixed with blood in Revelation chapter 8, verse 7. And hail in the temple of God in the last verse of Revelation chapter 11, saying that this is a hail that's 100 pounds, comes down from heaven. And that is the one overcomes, the shepherd that was chosen by Jesus Christ, that testify to the actions of betrayers and destroyers. So up to here, so far we've looked at the contents of Revelation chapter 16. Let us conclude. First, the overcomers gathered at the sea of glass in front of the throne of God as a bowl of God's wrath. And it is a content that makes known the judgment of the betrayers and the destroyers. Secondly, the bowl of judgment of God's wrath that judges the betrayers and destroyers. Shows the image of the angels standing on the sea and on the earth in Revelation chapter 10 and will be fulfilled according to the word that tells them that they will judge the betrayers and destroyers. Thirdly, in chapters 8, 9, and 13, the beast of the dragon will be judged and ultimately will be judged double portion as much as the beast has done. And fourthly, the judgment of Revelation chapter 16 will judge the destroyers so this, in Revelation chapter 6, will fulfill the words of avenging the blood of the martyrs. And the judgment of Revelation chapter 16 will be the judgment of God's wrath 
that contains the heart of God that has been grieving for 6,000 years. This is a word of hope that tells us that this world, which Satan has ruled since his time of Adam, but that will come to an end and the age of God's reign will begin. In this way, today, we'll conclude the contents of the judgment of the seven bowls of wrath in Revelation chapter 16. Next time, in Revelation chapter 17, there will be a testimony of the mystery of the prostitute, who is a destroyer, and the beast with seven heads and ten horns, and the reality of the wine of adultery, which is Satan's food from the false shepherd. I hope that you will attend next time, confirm the reality of these things, and become one with the word of truth. Pastors and family members of faith in the global community who are with us, we are looking at the same words of the Bible under the same sky. Although we are of different races and languages, our hope for the Word of God is sincere, and we have believed in heaven and eternal life to this very day. The only way for believers to have hope and get to know God is through these words of the Bible you are holding. Since we started our faith with the Bible, we must have faith according to the Bible to achieve our hope. Let's believe in the prophecies and the reality of the new covenant of Revelation and hope to enter the heaven together. Everyone, Shinchenji Promised Shepherd, has seen everything in the actual location of the events of Revelation where they fulfilled. And because he has received the revealed word, witnessing to all these things, he's testifying to the churches of the world. He's also working for world peace in order to put the teachings of Jesus into practice. Former and incumbent heads of state, chief justices of the Supreme Court, and parliamentaries from all over the world, universities and social groups and leaders of each religion are uniting together by shouting, we are one. In addition, Shinchenji wants to love, desires to love each other and to worship God and peace. We are sharing the word of revelation and with everyone around the world. And after hearing the word of this revelation, Many pastors around the world desire to sign an MOU with us. In the meantime, many pastors who have wanted to know the book of Revelation are shouting with one voice that we need to know the prophecies of Revelation and its fulfillment. Also, many pastors are invited to the seminar themselves to learn the words of Revelation and teach their saints. And many have been conveying their gratitude to the chairman of Shincheonji and Shincheonji for delivering hope through the words of revelation during these difficult times. There is only one God we believe in, one Jesus, and one Bible that we, that we study. If people all over the world become one in truth, loving each other, creating a world of true peace, won't the beautiful world we desire be fulfilled? I hope that we'll live together forever in the kingdom of God, a paradise where there is only freedom, peace, and love. Now I hope that we can all become one in God, who is the source of all blessings. We are one. Thank you. I'll briefly, briefly pray as a representative. God, who is the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth, who is the King of kings, the Lord of lords, and the source of all blessings, I give my sincere thanks and honor to you for allowing the Shincheonji Online Sermon Seminar to be held all over the world. All souls who are hungry and thirsty for righteousness, who come to at this time, please grant us great perception of heaven. In particular, Grant special spiritual power 
to pastors in each country so that they can see the Word of God being testified time and time again and give them the eyes to see and the ears to hear and a heart to understand. Just like the confession of Jesus' disciples 2,000 years ago, the word of eternal life is the word of the Lord. Just as they confess, to whom shall we go? Please give all the believers in all religions, in all countries, and to pastors all over the world the heart to find the words of eternal life, words of life, words of truth, the revealed word that's fulfilled today. Please help us to understand it together and work greatly so that the whole world may become one with this word of truth. We ask that you will be always be with us, always protect us, guiding us on your path. And we believe and pray in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ, who leads us from death to life. Amen. There's a name written on the prostitute's forehead. And why is it Babylon? It says it's a mystery. But why is it a mystery? Why is it Babylon? The true meaning of Babylon in Revelation chapter 17 will be revealed today. We'll take a look at the content of Revelation chapter 17 together, which explains the mystery of the destroyers, the Passover at the time of the second coming, and the judgment the prostitute receives. We must understand the mystery of the great prostitute so we can distinguish. The content of Revelation chapter 17 will be testified next week. It will be at the same time as today's seminar. If you have any questions about the lesson you've learned today or related to Shincheonji Church and our teaching, you can call us at the number you see on the screen. We'll answer, we'll answer all of your questions. We'll finish today's seminar with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This concludes our seminar on the testimony of prophecy and fulfillment of revelation, God's new covenant. Thank you for staying with us. A graduation of 100,000, unprecedented in the history of religion itself, was held in South Korea on the 10th of November. As there was no venue large enough to house the massive number, the event was also held in separate venues in Busan and Gwangju. The event was also broadcasted live to 112 countries, including South Africa, the United States and the UK. The fact that 103,764 people graduated simultaneously over a short period of time is a miraculous event that no human can accomplish. It is proof that God's power is at work. <laughs> Shincheonji Church of Jesus, organizer of the event, has shown an explosive 300% growth in the number of registered members over the past 10 years. The graduates cited the excellence of the Bible teachings as the main reason for entering the Shincheonji Church. The unpresented light of the world, I give all glory to God and Jesus who called me to this amazing 100,000 graduation ceremony. My name is Aaron Kim and I was a missionary working in Brazil. Born into a third generation pastor family, I thought my path was already set to go into ministry like my grandfather and father. But after becoming a missionary, I became very troubled. The fact that I wasn't guiding the sheep with the word made me feel so guilty. I felt troubled inside. The seminary I attended didn't give me much knowledge. Instead, I was just told, no one can understand God's will. We're not supposed to know. This, this just added burden to my troubled heart. 
But while I was going through this, my sister told me one day, Aaron, I'm learning the Bible like I've never heard before. My eyes are finally open. I didn't hesitate for a second to grab onto that opportunity. I want to learn it too. How can I learn and where? This is how my faithful moment of learning in Zion Christian Mission Center began. The very first day I started learning the Reveal Theology in Center, I remember feeling dizzy from shock and amazement. I felt like my heart was shattered upon realizing that everything that I learned in seminary was in fact wrong. And I thought, it shouldn't just be me who gets to hear this, but my father, who is a pastor, and my family, who I deeply love. And the entire world needs to hear this teaching. I couldn't just sit still anymore, so I went out to evangelize. And through God's guidance and grace, I was able to guide a hundred members in Brazil to this revealed word. <laughs> On top of that, another 100 or so members in the church in America are also in Zion Christian Mission Center Theology School. There's truly no end to God's amazing work. A pastor who'd studied in the same center as me invited a lecturer from Shincheonji to teach his own congregation. And they are graduating with us today. Hallelujah. And another pastor couple in the same class guided 500 members of their churches in Central America and Texas to this fulfillment of revelation. Yeah. Not only that, there are many other pastors who are also learning this word. From now on, I promise to dedicate myself in this work of harvest to repay even just a little bit of the eternal grace God and Jesus has shown me. I'd like to ask all the pastors around the world, what kind of era do you think you are living in today according to the Bible? Who are you according to the Bible? Do you know if you are created according to the promise of the Bible? And look at this place today! We are having a graduation ceremony of 100,000 theology students and this is the very proof that the living God is working today in Shinjaji! Now the whole world will come gathering to Shincheonji Church of Jesus to learn the fulfillment of the new covenant, Revelation. And no matter who it is, no matter where they are, they will see, hear, and learn this revealed word. The 100,000 graduates of the 110 class who are gath gathered here today promise not to waste any time, but harvest and build the kingdom of heaven together. Hallelujah! We will become the people who can teach the entire world who will be coming to seek God's word of life. We will become the walking Bibles. Amen. To God and Jesus who saved us from death to life, I offer up all the glory and thanks for eternity to come. Hallelujah! As the entire world follows the word of truth to join Shincheonji, a major upheaval is expected to occur among religious circles. Yeah.